said, but for mighty God, the Bible said, as many as are being led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. I'm not saying you should not submit to yourself to your Savuakunde, <laughs> So let me say to you, Jesus Christ, the foundation. Jesus Christ is the foundation. Amen. And if we build on this foundation, let me say to you, beloved, all that we desire and all that we require, beloved, will be made available. Jesus Christ makes it quite clear in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 6, of the 33 verse. He said, If you see, he first. The kingdom of God and all is righteousness. All things will be added unto you. It is very important, it's imperative, beloved, that what we are building on is what is required of God. What is your, that's a question I'm going to ask first, beloved. What is your foundation? Because people have different kind of a foundation. People build their own foundation. In spite of the fact that Jesus Christ may establish a foundation on which we ought to build on. There are people who build their own foundation. Because you see a lot of people in the house of God, they have their personal agenda. I wonder if you understand what I am saying. They have their personal agenda. This is only a door for them to enter in so that they can come and accomplish their own agenda. Beloved, that's the wrong pathway. I ask the question, what is? But I would also like to ask, who is your foundation? Not only what, but who is your foundation? Because everybody, I wouldn't say everybody, because most of us are sincere enough to ensure that we are building on the rock. The Apostle Paul, let me just point this out, beloved. The Apostle Paul in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, on the 8th verse, he said, Beware, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men and the rudiment of the world and not after Christ. The Bible said, In whom dwelleth all the fullness of the God and bodily. They're not building 
plunder. They are being driven away, as I said in the book of Colossians, chapter 2 and 8. They are being driven away by the philosophy of men, beloved. Many of us, we are going after what men present. But I, let me say, I'm not trying to say you should ignore your bishops, your pastor, those that watch over you. But every one of us and anybody contradict what I am saying, beloved, they are not taking it away from the law. Beloved, I am saying this, that Jesus Christ is the foundation. And if he is not building on the foundation of Jesus Christ, beloved, you are going down the wrong pathway. Every one of us, my bishops, and all you sons and daughters of the Most High, every one of you should have a personal relationship with your Lord and your Savior. If you don't have a personal relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, beloved, you are going to be doomed. You must have an established, a personal relationship, beloved. Because what God wants you to do is not what he wants the apostle to do. Oh, yes. I wonder, am I correct? Oh, yes. what, what God requires of me to do is not what he asks my pastor that bring me up to do. Beloved, let me say to you, there is one thing that really matters. Beloved, we must be led by the Spirit of Almighty God. The Bible said, as many as are being led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. I'm not saying you should not submit yourself to your officers or your bishop or those who have you should because I did submit myself. Beloved, let me say to you, I may not blow the bands as good as you do. I may not be able to trump the bands and some people criticize me. But let me tell you something, beloved. I want to be led by the Spirit. Oh, I to understand Many of us never ever know what God wanted us to do, what God wanted us to be, because we never, we are led because of others. We're just following. We never allow God to take full control of your life and bring about what he requires of you to do. Beloved, you got to know him for yourself. Oh, yeah. You got to know him for yourself. You got to know him. I spent over 30 years with my pastor before he died, beloved. But let me say to you, all that he did, I have the highest respect for him. The highest regard for him. But beloved, one thing I try to do is for the Lord God of my salvation to guide me where he wants me to be and today I am and I know 100% that I am doing what he requires of me to do so if you don't see I know I have a lot of critics that I am not a revival I am not a real but beloved I don't I have nothing to my life I have nothing to do with Church, so to speak, when I say church, religion. I have nothing to do with religion. Let me tell, let me make it quite clear. I have nothing, I don't talk religion. I talk about Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all that I, I don't contradict what you, because the Holy Ghost is used 
and I love to sit down and watch you guys blow the pipes and trumpet and do what the Holy Ghost requires. I know that some of you, I don't have to ask, you're only been practicing it. You're not even being driven. Am I lying? Am I lying? Am I lying? Some of you, 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 let me tell you, I know. Because sometimes the angels is gone and they're still there. I want to say that someone else. I, I mean, I'm not, I am not driven, but I can tell. If you can tell when the presence of a mighty God is in your midst. I can tell. I may not be able to blow the bands, trump the bands, but when the angel is gone. I know that you are on your own. I know that you are on your own. The anointing is long gone. Long gone. And what you are doing is as many as are being led by the Spirit of God. Let me tell you, beloved, the foundation, as I was saying, uh, I, I, let the peace, let me tell you, I, I, I love, I, I, and my apostle knows that I love to be led by the Spirit. Amen. And I am the ways and means, once the Holy Ghost take me on a detour, Amen. beloved, I'm going where the Holy Ghost said. Amen. I want if you understand the beloved, I am going where the Holy Ghost, we are the same, we are Live from the pit of hell. Oh, and if you understand me, we're singing. We are the elites. We are the elites. We are follow what? Follow who? Look at your life. Look at your life. Look at the foundation that you are building on. Yes, then you come to see so we're very easy. Well, it didn't say where Jesus lead me, you know, so let me, let me correct that. It didn't sing saying where Jesus leads me, I will follow. They just said so where he, who is he? I know some of us, beloved, we know who is he. But some of us singing, where he leads me. But who is he that you're talking about? Who you going to follow or who you are following? Because Jesus said, my sheep knows my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. But I'm at the foundation which Jesus Christ wants us to build on. For me, I am giving you this one. It is the word of Almighty God. If the word of God is not the foundation that you are building on. All in view. You heard what I said? When I started off, I said, from the book of Colossians chapter 2, 8, Beware the steady man's path. You hear what it says? He lasts and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ in whom dwelleth in Christ, in whom dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, meaning the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost dwelling in Jesus Christ. Amen. All, it didn't say one or two of the Godhead. In him dwelling, resided in Jesus Christ. All the fullness of the Godhead body. Meaning same with physical Everything is embedded in him. And I am complete in him. That's what the Bible says. And ye are complete in him. The 
Brother Ben, if you have this Jesus Christ, if he is your foundation, if Jesus Christ is your foundation, Brother Ben, let me say to you, if you are building on that foundation, Brother Ben, no weapon that forms against you shall prosper. And every time that rises up in judgment shall be He was saying, we are complete in him. Beloved, my life, I can't talk about your life, but I am telling you, I feel so complete in this Jesus Christ. I never knew him the way I ought to know him. But let me say to you, beloved, I get to know him. And let me tell you that I feel complete in him. Because no weapon that forms against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up will be completely destroyed. Because I am on the foundation. It doesn't matter what arrow may point at me. What spear may come at me. A thousand shall fall by my side. And ten thousand by my right hand. But the church is not living a triumphant and victorious life. The church, I am not afraid to say so. And I'm not going to be a brit um, uh, hypocritical. Beloved, the church is not being who they ought to be and where they ought to be. Because, beloved, let me say, we are only talking about Jesus. I take this life very, very serious, beloved. And you should take it very, very serious also. Because if you don't take it serious, all your time spent in this house or whichever houses that you are worshipping, beloved, you are Work and your labor will all be it will all be in vain the apostle Paul beloved let me say to you that the apostle Paul in the book of Acts of the apostle chapter 9 he went down to Tarsus because he was a very very what should I say? Dedicated and committed man of God. Because he was keeping the law. There was nothing about it. If you follow through on that Papa, Apostle Paul, those of us who read that his life story, he was a man, a Pharisee, but at the highest level. Let me say to you, he, he wants everybody to be in compliance with the laws. As far as the law, and if you are not keeping the law, he will ensure that you die or be cast into prison, and whatever the consequences may be, beloved, he was strict when it comes to doing the will of Almighty God. Because that's what it was. And he and his eyes were not open so that he could see the changes. Some of us, beloved, changes are taken. Is passing us by. Things are happening and it is passing us by. You know why it is passing us by? Because, beloved, we refuse to be led by the Spirit of God. God wants to take us to the next dimension and we refuse to move to the next dimension and that was a problem with Saul. He stood to the law. Stood to the law. He drank the old wine. And when the new wine came, he was so drunken. He was so drunken. He had no place in his heart for the new wine that Jesus brought for them to partake of. Some of us 
Because it's the same thing with our life. It's the same thing with our life. Jesus Christ had to strap Saul down to the ground with the light coming out of heaven, brighter than the light of the sun. In order for him to bring him away from the law and to bring him into his kingdom. When Jesus Christ struck him down to the ground, he spoke to Saul, saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? When you touch the Lord's anointing. Hey! When you touch the Lord's anointed, you touch Almighty God. Touch not the Lord's anointed and do His prophets no harm. He struck him down to the ground and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for you to kick against the brick. A brick is a mark or something that has a sharp point. Why? Yeah, Pastor Paul, Jesus said, look, you got the rose where I send you now. He said, what will thou have me to do? Some of us, God don't even bother to ask us anymore or talk to us anymore because he has given us so many chances. Beloved, take these words serious. Take these words serious because you will find yourself in hell. You have to make sure you know the foundation. Saul wasn't then Paul. He became Paul because his name was changed. Some of us, we need a change of name. We need a change of name. Because that name that we are carrying is working out for us. Amen. It is the same Saul that became Paul. And beloved, let me say to you, you saw what Paul became, the person he was. Let me say to you, beloved, you look all in the New Testament straight down. Most of those were written by his own hand. Beloved, the same man, the same way he was committed to the laws, the same way he was committed to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, man. Come to grace. Beloved, we need to know the foundation and we're the one that said, and Christ the solid rock I stand. We know all these and we sing them and we go on and on and on. I make fun of the church all the time. When I said I make fun of the church, my apostles, my bishops, let me say to you, I make fun because when I hear them sing, they only sing. Yes, we're not sure. Jesus said, these people, they underrate me with their lips, but their heart. These people, they come in like most of you do, and you sing and you sing and you dance. You underrate me with your lips, but their heart is far from me. Far from me. You can't fool. Jesus. You can even fool Lucifer. Because Lucifer know who you are. Amen. Lucifer know who you are serving. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. He know who you are and who you are serving. Yes. Remind me saying this, beloved. He know who you are. It remind me of the seven sons of Skin. Anybody know, I know, I know too many Bibles come in here for us to give and ask about. Oh, yeah. The seven sons of Stephen, beloved, they saw Jesus casting out the devils. Paul 
God still will have darkness. And they determined that to do That's in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. Beloved, let me say to you, they determined that guess what happened? We're going we to do it too. We're going to do it too. So, because that's all we do, we follow. We see the man of God doing this, we're going to do it too. But you must be led by the Spirit. You must be led by the Spirit. That's what I want to break down into your cranium. Mm -hmm. I want it to be dear. Beloved, we must be led by the Spirit. For as many as are being led by the Spirit, they are the children. Let me just put it that way. Of Almighty God. Beloved, this life is a good life. It's an awesome life. It's a wonderful life. It is a life that will give you reward when your work is over. You will be able to say, like the apostle Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And sworn there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, and not for me only. Love is appearing. Yes. Beloved, what will we do? Please. Am I, I am looking, but the Holy Spirit is tracking me, beloved. I know that there are souls right in this heart mm -hmm. that are not right with God. Mm -hmm. We are not right with God. We're only protecting the foundation that we are built on, it's not the rock. We're building on the sand. You know what I'm talking about when I said we're building on the sand. When the wind blows and when the waves come along, everything is solved and gone away. There are those whose house is on the rock and a firm foundation. Firm foundation. You will be above and not beneath. You will be the head and not the tail. You shall be the victor and not the victim. You shall be the winner and not the loser. Love it, some of us, we were the Lord, Lord, why you not hear me? You don't hear me. You don't hear me. Jesus, you don't hear me. Hey. You should not know why I'm not here. You should not know why I'm not here. You know why? You should not know that. Don't be an hypocrite. Don't be an hypocrite. My sheep knows my voice and the voice of a stranger. He will not follow. It's just the other day I fasted for seven, eight days. Beloved, when I fasted that day, the two things I asked more of the Lord is open up my eyes to see and my ears to hear. I was understanding most of the things, but look, I think I need to see a lot more of what is happening around me. And the Bible said, if the blind leads the blind, they shall fall, fall in a ditch. That was my word to Jesus Christ. That is how serious about the people that I lead. I said, if I am not qualified, please, please bring somebody else. Bring some. I don't have a problem with Jesus Christ digging up a brethren from out of the audience and putting in my position. It is not about me. It is about my father's business. The other day, I said to I said to the Lord, look, I am going to give my overseer the position to take over this church. The Lord God answered me and said, if you do that, the same.
same thing that happened to Esau. You know, beloved, Esau sold. If you wonder, what is he talking about now? Esau sold his birthright. That's what the Lord said to me. I, 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 I couldn't think of that. When I said to him, I want my overseer because he has certain anointing over his life. And I said, no, I'm going to allow her to take over because let me tell you, people don't worry about position in a church. That's not my style. That's not my style. That's not my style. But God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Blessed Holy Spirit, beloved, there is nothing that I enter since my youthful days that I have never been lifted up to the top. And I never fight anybody, never ask anybody. I always reject them. I always abandon them and say, I don't want to be a part of it. But anyhow it works out, it remains the same. I have to everybody pointing finger, you have to be the one. I never see it in me. I've never seen it in me. But he always, and I do it only because I want to be obedient unto my father. But I don't fight. All I am worried about is me making it. And you should be the same. You should be worried about your soul making it into the kingdom of Almighty God. Amen. 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 In one another, trying to destroy one another because of positions in the church, and we are not building on the foundation of our Lord, of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I spoke about the seven sons of Sceva, who was the high priest, and look, they wanted to be like Paul and Jesus, and they went over. And they said unto the demons, as they saw the demons, they said, I ask you, just putting it in the layman term, I ask you to come out of this body. Come out of this body. Come out of this body. Let me tell you, the demon said, Jesus, I know. Paul. I know. But who are you? Some of us, we want to take up something that we are not anointing. We are not anointing. God are not chosen us to be. But we see other people doing it and we want to do it. And there is nothing that we possess. No the demon in the young man washed down upon him and they begin to rip him apart. Let me say to you, he was but naked. Am I correct? Anybody? Yes. He was but naked. He was ripped up by the demon that was occupying that young man. But let me say to you, if it is not yours, leave it alone. Then we ought to leave it alone. Because some of us, you know, let me say this to you, beloved. Some of us were in some office that we don't have what it takes to be in. If I'm lying, tell me my vision. And because, let me tell you, if you're going any time God put you somewhere, my apostle, He give you the necessary need. He give you the necessary power because in the book of St. Luke chapter 10 and the 19th verse, He says, 
said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and overrun the power of the enemies, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hurt you. You hear Jesus said, Behold, I am giving you. So if he is sending you, when he was sending out the apostles, he said to them, Tarry here. Tarry here in Jerusalem. Some of us we don't tarry no tar, but we John like God. We don't tarry no tar, but we can on there. And nothing is a tarry here in Jerusalem. Because when I go, I move send pray to my father to send you the comfort, the Holy Ghost. And when he comes, it shall endure you with power. And when the day Pentecost was fully come, they carried here. Ask those who you see with power, and they will tell you what they have been through. Yes. And they didn't get here just like that. Let me tell you, even though some things when you encounter, some things when you encounter, some demons when you encounter and overcame them all because God did not send you to back up and did not provide you with the necessary weapons. Kingdom of darkness, have no weapon. 
God that falls against me shall prosper. Let me sing, beloved. I said in the name of Jesus. This is the temple of the true and the living God. This is the vessel of Almighty God. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Two minutes after. Two minutes after. Two minutes after. Two minutes after. Let me 
say this to you, church, and this is my perception. I hear a lot of people say, they talk about how oh, Jacob is a robber, he's a thief, he's a this, he's a that. He never stole. He never. That's the anomaly that's the same at the Bible. He never stole. He's a birthright. And I hear too many men of God talking about how oh, Jacob stole. He's a birthright. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Esau sold his birthright to Jacob. He said, what is this to me now? I am dying. I am hungry. I am famished. What is this birthright to me? Esau, Jacob knew the value of the birthright. He knew even when in the barn Hold on, on the foot, on the soft, on the womb, crying at the womb. Some of us, beloved, that's who we are. We want to be so much in Almighty God. We will go the extra mile. We will go the extra mile to be a son and a daughter of Almighty God. No matter what we are going through. No matter what we're going through, I've already told you about Shadrach, Mishim, and Abednego. I told you now about Esau and Jacob. I said that Jacob was on a solid foundation. Look at Joseph. Look at Joseph. He recognized that, look, if I go to bed with party for life, I would have been I in the house of my master. Some of us, oh Jesus, the foundation. Many of us, let me say to you, beloved, let me say, many of us, our, oh Jesus Christ. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Joseph, look. And the rock that he was built on. Joseph said, Oh, can I do something with you? And sin against God. Sin, sin against God. Some of the sisters are that we said to the boys then, How can I do such a thing as sin against God? Some of the brethren, the men, them, are so we said, As God, Some of us can do anything. 
and get away with it. We can see any life in our life and we can take the death in Jesus Christ. Beloved, I can never do these things. I can never do these things. Beloved, I am not saying in my early days I never had struggle. And none of us can say we never had struggle. But beloved, let me tell you, two things I catch on and realize what is my priority. The things that are supposed to be my priority. It is about building on a solid foundation. My life, beloved, I don't have to worry. I wish you can say the same. I heard a sister talking about how she had to go back in to, to, to get stuff in, 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 what is the town now in your name? Brownstown. Brownstown. And she had went all the way to Brownstown, get her, her, her things and they couldn't even have money to pay for the, the drive. I listened keenly to the things that they were going and the sacrifice she said she must, it's not like she would take her food and go and cook and then not work. She finds herself back in the presence of the Lord. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. So when you see some people now come at church and then come and every minute they look and watch, they look and they watch, they look and they watch. Beloved, let me say to you, make sure the foundation in your building is a solid. Now I am free. I am free. Um, beloved, let me say to you, I cannot come down until I ask if anybody would love prayer. The Holy Ghost instruct me that I should never ever plan to see and only expect to read. That's what the Holy Ghost taught you. So every time you preach, you must make an altar call to pray for people uh, to do these things. And you, nobody have, don't have to come in. Don't feel obligated. It is not just playing my part. And if you don't come, I'm not going to feel any way. So please, don't do it. Right? You must have an occasion. You don't have one beloved. God bless you. God keep you. There is nobody for that. Prior, beloved, it is fine with me. Bless the name of Jesus. To God for the glory. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your grace, for your favor. All that was done was done in alignment with your will and with your word. I thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to take total and complete control of my life. All that was said and done was said and done by the grace and by the Spirit of the living God. I pray over the lives of these thy daughters of Zion, your sons also. I pray that you will let your blessing come the center of them. Let your grace never depart from them. Open up their eyes to see. Give them ears to hear, that they will hear your instruction and follow you. Bless and consecrate this ministry. Sanctify it. Let there be doors open. Draw the people from around the community. Draw them into this house, O oh Lord God. Draw them in this. I know the community is not a big one, but Lord God, I pray that you will dig up those that are sitting in their comfort zone and bring them into this house. Bring them into this house. Bring them into this house of yours in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. I return the service back to the man of your book. Thank you.